film starts with the sound of azan in the morning. The visual is of the lights on the bridge over Sabarmati. Camera pans and we see the bricks of someone's balcony and a puddle of water under soggy clothes. Camera takes a turn and walks inside to see a pillow covering someone's head. The softboard is empty except for a rectangular strip of paper which says, I have to go so I'll carry my memories in my head. There is a sound of hurrying feet as the roommate leaves the room and comes back to take a look at the clock which begins to ring at 12.30. Deepa is sitting at a table writing when the ink runs out and she curses the pen. Next shot is of the white wash basin. The black ink makes stains on it as water gushes out and then one sees her putting ink into the pen very, very slowly. The voiceover begins. Another time in life, you sit cross-legged on your chair and switch on the lamp to attract mosquitoes, hoping they won't notice you in the dim light. And you even fix a mirror so that the moths could get confused about the real source of light. And you are left alone to get confused about which one of your dumb ideas is the worst. Because you couldn't possibly humiliate the word best for one of them. What are you doing? I'm just generally thinking about myself. When are you shooting? Isn't that scripting? What's it all about? It's about a lot of things. Tony, you heard the joke of Panda? No. Yes? Listen, I'm going to tell you. One more time, a Panda restaurant is going to be a Panda restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Okay, listen. So then, you distract yourself by thinking about someone else's idea. And it depresses you strangely. Because you love it. And all of them have been thought of before you finally walked on to them at a snail's pace. Just then, an insect decides to get stuck between your toes and you squash it absent-mindedly. You immediately feel guilty and count the number of music cassettes you have. But that makes you feel even more guilty because you haven't paid your mess fees, despite the fact that someone else ate your food last semester. So you scold yourself. How can you think of mundane and banal stuff like food when you still haven't put up your pre-dip. <laughs> she looks at the telephone, picks up the receiver out of habit. She reads the messages and writes, Deepa, you got a call, and then laughs lightly. She begins to turn around but stops and rubs off the message. As she starts to walk ahead, the voiceover begins. Most of the time, you don't know what date it is and somehow you always two three days behind the rest of the world except the train from wherever to Ahmedabad. Wherever is mostly the place where you want to be once you've reached Ahmedabad and you want to be in Ahmedabad once you've finished enjoying wherever and thus the quest goes on to be somewhere you want to be forever at last. I guess what you don't realize is that most of the time you are somewhere in between, about to leave but not yet gone, floating between guides, projects, yellow slips, midsum juries, and other minor crises in life. Any person who's starting off uh, a design agency or whatever, he just rents this place or whatever, buys this place. And since it's going to be really expensive, so you just have two floor kind of thing. And where the roof for the first floor is removed, okay? And then what you have is these roll steel joists, okay? This is eye section. And so it's basically an eye section. And it's just supposed to be suspended from the roof, okay? So what you have is on two sides it's cantilevered, okay? So it's supported. She reaches the mess and stops outside the rec room. She goes inside, looks at the TV and switches it on, but it doesn't work. She sits in silence in front of a reflection on the TV and wonders again. The time has come for leaving. But leaving isn't easy, even when one wants to. 
drops come together and hurt your intestines till the food you haven't eaten is thrown away because someone else is full up to their brains in it. So you try to enjoy the silence of freedom, but it only serves to burden you with more threads of entangled thoughts as sleep takes leave of you and returns at the wrong time when you're sitting in God's cabin while he solemnly tells you the time has come. The time has come for you to leave. Some other time you get to sit and write peacefully but the peace doesn't last for long. All your cigarettes leave your pack looking at you reluctantly and you let them go hoping they won't feel too bad. She reaches the old canteen and finds two people talking to Hasmuk about his girlfriend and how he blames his illegible handwriting for having lost her. The voiceover begins again. Sometimes you wonder why you need to be intelligent. What if the burden of being intelligent was taken away somehow? One fine morning you wake up and decide to be simple. What if you went back to doing your BA in literature or became an engineer or a pilot or a nursery school teacher instead of becoming complicated? Just met my guide. Finish past and push off. Yeah, I guess he's right. Yeah, I know. And then one day you'll become a visitor. A visitor to this paradise of gods and their mortal pupils. That's probably the last thing that'll happen to you, and you will finally give up on your formative years. Mm -hmm. Another time in life, you collect beetles in a farm, thinking all of them are lost. So you launch a rescue mission and choke all of them in a plastic box. By some miracle, all of them disappear by the morning. You cry your eyes out, complaining to your grandmother, and she pacifies you, smiling secretly. And now, you wonder if you'll find your way across a farm of people and wires. Priyanka, you got a letter? Yeah? Oh, sorry, it's for the other Priyanka. Some other time, you sit in the corner of your musty room, imagining a cup of hot steaming coffee and potato chips. But then you realize that in reality, there isn't one. And the one in your brain is spilling over and giving you a headache. And more and more number of times you comb your hair and count the latest nicotine stains in your teeth and play with shadows on the wall till someone walks into the loo and embarrasses your skin. She goes back to the reception area and begins walking up the staircase. She reaches the graphic studio and sees one of her batchmates. His work is all over his table and she begins talking to him. One sees them from very far and doesn't hear the conversation, but one can see that they are friends talking about batchmates long gone. Long gone yet unfinished. Unfinished people talk about unfinished people. You remember the number of choices you had and how you faithfully followed the process of elimination instead of logical choice because you couldn't draw straight lines. She goes out to the foundation studio, opens the window and picks up a chair. She puts it in the corner of a balcony and sits down. The voiceover begins. Today, at this time in life, you sit with your tears behind your eyes, your voice behind your tongue, your head hurts, your eyes hurt. You must have forgotten to drink water as usual. So many people have walked through the alleys of your mind. So many have strayed into the cubicles of your heart that your memory walks out on you saying, when are you leaving? Except to
Of time, something.